Jermaine. Oh Jermaine. So Jermaine, you approached me today. You obviously watched some of the software speakers corner. So I want some of your thoughts on what you see here online. What, what at the speakers corner? Um, it's a good place to go to, to, to obviously to talk about your ideas, to, to voice opinions. Um, you know, I'm an I'm an advocate for free speech, and I'm a, and I'm a free speech across the whole entire world. Um, so yeah, this, this is why I come. The, the, the main reason why I'm here basically is to learn. I wanna, I basically wanna know as many true things as possible and as, and as little false things. Thirty-seven. Ah, okay. Thirty-seven. So, wow. And with religion, you've got conflicting ideas. Where one 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 thing is claiming to have the truth, and another one is claiming to have the truth. So. I want to see where where this where this leads me. Yeah. Okay. And would you say that from what you've seen at Speakers Corner, one of the wonderful things is that you have many different people meeting up who normally would never meet up. Exactly. exactly. That's, 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 that's the that's the good thing about this place. Is that, um, yeah, people of different faiths, not just faiths, different political political ideas, political agendas, they can discuss in an open dialogue. Um, and stuff like that, yeah. Okay. And would you say that um, that this missionary activity at the park, would you say it's conducive to dialogue? So, this this method of discussion is not it's not conducive. It's not it's not um, it's not practical. Shouting over someone doesn't mean that you're right. And I, I, I really don't like it. Don't sure. And were you were you? We're having a discussion. I started shouting over you. Like um, this is this is what I think about atheism. No, you're wrong. No, you're wrong. Shut up. Shut your mouth. Shut up. No, no, no. What about what about the money going? It's not a way to discuss. Because respect is not going to charity. Absolutely. And um, would you say you used to be Christian at one point? Is that an, is that? I, I, I wouldn't consider myself as a Christian, so basically um, my mum was a Christian, my sister's a Christian, my brother, I think my father was a deist. Um, I did go to church when I was younger, but my mum stopped for some reason, so I don't know why. I never asked her. So I grew up in a Christian... I grew up in a Christian household. <laughs> but I can't really consider myself a Christian because... I had problems with um, a lot of stories in the Bible. Okay. A lot of the... Mainly the... Um, the miracle stories. The miracle stories. The miracle stories. Yeah, the miracle part in the sea. Ali, answer my question. Where is the money going? The money you say, state that's where the church me or him? Where is the money? Show us. Carry on. Yeah, so when I was... Who's paying your wages? When I was little, I couldn't distinguish these stories from the stories I would see in... Um, in Greek mythologi mythological stories, right. what was the difference? Why, where were these ones fake, but these ones were real? Yeah. I had a really big problem accepting these, and yeah. even up until in my early 20s, I'm like, I'm nearly 40 now, but even up into my early 20s, I would identify as a Christian because... Culturally. Culturally, because... Ali, why do you refuse to ask me? A bit closer to you. Sorry. 10, 10, 10, 15, 20 years ago, atheism was really a big thing. Yeah. Really a big thing. Yeah, yeah. It wasn't until really like I really started going to the internet, watching videos and stuff. I it opened up my mind a bit, and I said to myself, like I can't, I can't identify as a Christian because I don't believe in the Bible. Sorry, sorry, sorry. sorry I mean, yeah, I couldn't really identify as a Christian because I didn't believe in I was in the Bible. Um, every year, that, that, was, that was when I started watching like stuff like the atheist um, experience. What's it called? Um, Mil Atheist Experience. Matt Delahunty. Matt Delahunty. I love Matt Del Delahunty. I watched a lot of his videos. And I put my, my mind Christianity and I said to myself, like, no, I'm, I'm an atheist. I just don't, I just don't believe these stories. So. Okay. And would you say, would you say when it comes to God's existence, that that's something which you're um, unconvinced about or was it the miracles you turned you away from God? Because if you believe in God, it's easy to believe in miracles, right? Yeah, so I consider myself to be agnostic and I'm not the atheist. I don't believe in God necessarily. But things like the Kalam cosmological argument, for example. The Muhammad Hijab, he's written a book, yeah. 
Yeah, yeah and, and, he's, and he's done a lot of videos on it. He had that um, debate with um, Cosmic Skeptic. Cosmic Skeptic, and he yeah. A clamp for, no and it's, for me, it's very hard to get around that. So yeah. he's working hard against it. It's very yeah. really solid. It's, it's quite solid. And he debunked himself recently. He did. He, he did a video on, on the clamp because one of the But he I'm refutes sorry. himself. I'm sorry. It's, 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 it's good that he's he honest. That. He's honest. He's an honest person. It's good that he did that. It's, it's a very strong theological um, syllogism. Yes, yes, yes. It's very, it's very strong. Yeah. So that's why I like to consider myself agnostic because there's a strong argument there. There is a strong argument. I, I, I'm an honest person myself. Sure. I can't, can't get around that. I can't get around it. To be yeah. But at the same time, you have questions. Yeah. For example, the Kalam cosmological argument for me it points to a source from where everything began. But it still doesn't convince me 100% that it could necessarily be the specific gods that the Christian and the, the, the Abrahamic gods that the Muslims and the Christians and the Jews believe in. So pointing to a, a source where everything comes from is one thing. I have no... Obviously the universe... Who is the source? Who is the source? Yeah, exactly. I have no problem believing that the universe came from somewhere because yeah. it had to. That's yeah. stupid to believe otherwise. Yeah. Yeah. But what that source is is where I'm predicted, is where I'm looking for the truth. Mm. And I've accepted also that I may never find the truth. Okay. Now, one thing I like, um, Jermaine, right? So, one thing I like, Jermaine, is that you, you seem like somebody who's willing to accept the idea that there may be a creator. You're willing to accept that the Kalam argument is obviously strong. But then the questions really are, how do we know that this is the God of Islam or the God of Abraham, right? That's the real question here. And additionally, you can sort of ask the question, yeah, it's a bit difficult. <laughs> you can sort of ask the question, why, does, um, why do religions differ so much as well? Why is there so much a difference in religion and stuff? So I want to I wanna give you a small answer from Islam and I want your thoughts on it. In Islam, we believe that you can use your reason to arrive at ideas about God. You can use the design argument to come up with the designer, Kalam argument for a cause, contingency argument for a necessary being. But to know who God is, we have to look into what is God's scripture? What is the evidence for God's scripture? Because if I say to you, I'm Muslim, I need to provide evidence for that. I can't just expect you to believe. What do you think about that? Yeah, that's, that's, that's reasonable. That's reasonable, yeah. Um, I mean, this is where the point of, conti this is where the point of um, contention is for me and for a lot of other people is that there's a lot of religions that claim to have the truth. And I've, I've, I mean, I've, I've, done, I've, I've done a lot of research into this stuff. Um, I'm currently reading a Bible. Yep. I, I will read the, the Quran once I've done that as well. Reading the Bible is very difficult though, to be honest. It's quite boring for me to be honest. Um, but I've, I've done a lot of research into these things and it's... I, I don't know. So for, for the Quran as, 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 as an example, maybe you can answer. The Quran claims to be a miracle from God, right? And it's the, it's the um, word of God, it's not inspired by God, it's yeah. the actual literal verbatim word of God. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. What is the... I'm glad you because I was, I, was, I was watching one of your videos, I'm thinking to myself, I wanted to ask you this question as I spoke to you. What is the, what is the miracle? What is the... If I said, if I was, if I was an alien that came down to this planet, I said to you, give me the best evidence you have, that the Quran is the word of God. What would, what would you say to you? What you give? Is very one thing, or is, it, or is, it, or is it that? Yeah. Is, it, is that, that easy? Sure. That's a very good question, and this is something which there's a lot of confusion about. So some Muslims, what they try and say is, well, the reason why the Quran's a miracle is because of the linguistic miracle, say, or they'll say it's a miracle because of preservation or because of prophecies or these things. I give a slightly different answer, which I believe is more in line with Islamic orthodoxy, which is this. If we accept the idea that there is a creator, and if we accept the idea that just like you make a camera, you have a manual with it, it makes sense God sends a revelation. There's something that God sends, whatever it is. Then the reason why I would say the Quran is the truth is because God teaches you in the, uh, sorry, the Quran teaches you about God, what you can arrive at even without the Quran. The fact that there's one God, the fact that God is the only one worthy of worship, the fact that there's right and wrong, and the fact that in this life, the purpose of our life is to love God, to put our hope and trust and fear in God. So I would say the message of Islam 
is the number one proof of Islam. But there's something very important here. If I was to try and prove to you Bernoulli's theorem, right, or some theorem in physics or hydraulics, I would give you a mathematical formula, right? Yes. Islam, the evidence for Islam doesn't work like that. It works from you having a sincere heart. And if you're sincere, God will give you guidance. This is our belief. So it's not just about an abstract proof. It's not just about an abstract or philosophical argument. Now, don't get me wrong. There are arguments for why the Quran is the word of God, philosophical arguments. There are arguments for God's existence. But the fundamental criteria in Islam for guidance is that you sincerely ask God for guidance and you look for guidance. So it's not just a philosophical gymnastics uh, sort of uh, back and forth. Okay, okay, good. Um, I mean, so... Okay, so... What, what, what would you say to... Um, what, what would you say, for example, if I said... There's so many other religions out there and it's, it's, it's difficult for me to pin down. Um, there, there isn't enough, like, I mean, I mean I'm, 40 year, I'm almost 40 years old and it's, it's difficult for me to research all of these different places good, and stuff. Good. A lot, because I, was, I was speaking to a, um, a, a gentleman from Afghanistan um, before I spoke to you. Yeah. And the topic came up about um, tests. Is that um, this life is a test yeah. from God. And I mentioned to him that I don't feel like this first test is a fair test. Right. Because if I was born in um, Saudi Arabia, more than likely I would have been Muslim. Right. Not, 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 not 100%, but more than likely. Yes. If I was born in um, India, so more than likely I'd be Hindu. Um, I mean, what, what, what do you say to that? It's a very good point. That's a very good point. The way I would explain it, uh, the way I would explain it, Jermaine, is this. Every single human being, we generally follow the religion of our forefathers. That's just a general point. However, the Quran, it doesn't teach us to follow the religion of our forefathers. It doesn't tell us that. The Quran says, reason and think for yourself. Reflect upon the creation. Do not follow your forefathers. Do not follow your society, your cultures, your passion. Follow your reason. And your reason is what will lead you to God. And a sincere heart is what is going to help you reach God. So you're absolutely right. Chances are, most of us in life, we follow the religion of our forefathers. But the Quran says, don't do that. Now, another book we have. Have you heard of this book, The Eternal Challenge? This book is evidence for why the Quran is the word of God. These are the logical arguments. But this is not including what I said earlier, which is you need to have a sincere heart. Because someone can read the arguments for why the Quran is the word of God. Ignore it, ignore it. And you know this, right? Well, you know what's interesting, yeah? In life, if you, if you catch a murderer, you catch a thief, you catch a rapist, or whatever. Do you think they know what they're doing is right or wrong? Or is it that they don't know? If so if, if you're... Um, I'm looking at this recently, if you're like a, a psychopath, there, there's, um, there's a part of the brain, I believe, that, yeah. um, that makes you more likely to be a psychopath, yeah. isn't there? They've looked into this, so... And these people, um, they lack empathy. So if you lack empathy, you're not going to feel like what you're doing is wrong. So I would say... Does a rapist feel like what they're doing is wrong? I would say, I would say so, no. Or, or, or a serial killer. I don't. From a, from, so in that, from, a society, from a society perspective, they would think what they're doing is wrong. But inside, I don't think they feel like what they're doing is wrong. I mean, some people are psychopathic. Yeah. But majority of people that do criminal things or wrong things, they still know what is right and wrong. Okay. So, you know, when you, you have regret, you have people who go to jail, they regret what they did. So, other than the psychopaths, other than the psychopaths, most people, they know right and wrong. Even the people that do wrong, they know right and wrong. And the thing is, in Islam, deep down inside, we do know that this life is short. We know that there's a higher purpose of this life. And deep down in our most private thoughts, deep down within us, we do have the knowledge of God. This in Islam is the fit. Wow. <laughs> you know what? I told you already. Okay. What's your thoughts on the fitrah? So um, I I do know that um, it's actually it's, um, 
there's actually science behind it. Yes, there is as well, yeah. Um, um, I, I think it might, I think some people hypothesize that it might be um, due to evolution. I don't know if yeah, you yeah, disagree yeah, with yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, we're, we're more likely to believe in. in, in yeah. Yep. Humans are more likely to believe in supernatural explanations to certain. Is that, stop me from being wrong. In, in supernatural explanations to determine why things happen the way they do. Like, for example, back in caveman times, people um, um, thought thunderstorms were, were, were acts of gods. Yes. Or floods were acts of God, stuff like that. They, they, these are all, yeah. these, these are all acts of God in their, in their, in their way of thinking. So, um, so you can, you can, you can, the picture goes back to, to when men first yeah. start walking, walking up. Right? So, yeah. yeah. So you know about this. This is a very interesting point you raise. Darwinists normally give this answer. They say that belief in God is evolved. We evolved to believe in God. But the thing is, there's a few philosophical problems with that. Say me and you, we're both running in a forest and the bear's gonna catch one of us and eat us. I stop to pray to God, you keep running. Who's more likely to survive? Why is that? So, for me, there's no reason to believe if you're gonna pray to God that the bear's gonna stop, is, is the, that the bear's gonna divert away from you and run yeah. towards me or not, or not eat you. Yeah. So, yeah. From, from practice, we know this, this, it, 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 it won't work. So. Yeah. So from a Darwin, from a Darwinian point of view, so the person that runs more likely to survive than the person if, if they're an atheist. Yeah? yeah. So if anything, the Darwinian explanation for the belief in God is very poor. They try and explain it, but they don't have good evidence. Now there's another good book, and with Ali Dawa's permission, I'm going to give this to you because it's his book, but I'm sure he won't mind. This is, this is known as Darwin and God, right? So in this book, basically, what Darwin says is that he believed in God even after he published The Origin of Species. He stopped believing, didn't he? Because of the problem of evil and suffering. Okay. It wasn't because of evolutionary theory. Oh, okay. So he also says there's nothing in evolutionary theory which undermines the existence of God. These are his thoughts. Okay, so yeah, so evolution doesn't disprove God. At all. C certainly, 100%. The problem with evolution, obviously, though, for a lot of theists, is that it undermines the um, creation story. It can. So Adam and Eve. So that we came from two people, which doesn't go the evolution standpoint. Yeah. But the thing is, what I do is I first establish why we believe in God, why we believe the Quran is true. Then there's a conflict between the human origin and what's uh, in the Quran in terms of creation and what science is saying. And the way I would resolve that is I would say in the Quran, God says that Adam is a miracle like Jesus is a miracle. Now I'm going to ask you a question, Jermaine, right? If Jesus was alive today and he's walking around, okay? And we took out his DNA. Scientists, would they say he came from a virgin birth or would they say he's a normal human being? Tough question. From his DNA. His DNA must link to someone though, doesn't it? Yep. It must be. If yep. he's got DNA, then it has to link to someone yep. else. Yep. Your yep. DNA is encoded with um, yep. your parents. Exactly, stuff. exactly. So that's come from. Yeah. Yeah. So they're gonna they're gonna look at um, other people's DNA, they're gonna look up the DNA of Mary and they're gonna say that's the mother. Then they're gonna look for the closest genetic similarity from her family, which is gonna be a man, and they're gonna say that's the father. Even though theoretically God can do a miracle. So for us, Adam is a miracle, but it doesn't mean we can discover it using science. And the thing is, what's important to, to know is this, this new atheist narrative, but I know you're not a new atheist, you're just an atheist. The new atheist narrative that evolution undermines design, undermines God, this is not something which makes any sense. Yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't make sense. Um, I mean, bring it closer to you, though. So, yeah. I mean, um, I mean, so, 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 I mean, so evolution from a from that standpoint, it's obviously it talks about the. Um, it doesn't. Evolution, so it's more to do with um, abiogenesis. Abiogenesis, I believe, is the origin theory, of life. It's the origin of life, but um, evolution is how things came to be, how the progression of life. Yeah. 
so how, how, how single organisms You know your stuff. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I do. Yeah, I, watch, I watch a lot of YouTube, but when I go to this, so um, but yeah, so I don't, I don't agree with that theory too. Um, evolution doesn't undermine God uh, 1%. It just tells us how we got here. It doesn't tell, tell us what, what the origin, origin is, how, how life started. So there's a lot of theories behind that, but there's no, there's no concrete evidence. I don't think there will be, to be honest. Okay. Yeah. Uh, apart from the God theory, I don't think there ever will be. Yeah. And the thing is, God is somebody, God, sorry, God as a concept is something which cannot be negated using evolutionary theory, physics theory or any other theory. And the most important thing for us to realize is that ultimately science can go hand in hand with God. How? Science is an explanation, attempt to explain how the world works. It doesn't mean it gets rid of why. How and why are two different things. So for example, I can explain how this camera works. This camera works by um, this particular mechanism, this electrical circuit, but by explaining how the camera works, does that mean there's no design of the camera? No. So that's how and why in terms of science. What's your thoughts on that? So this goes to the um, um, there was a watch on a, on a beach, you would have seen that it's got a um, the, watch, the watchmaker analogy is, 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 is also good. I wouldn't say it's as strong as the Kalam cosmological argument. But the problem, the problem with that watchmaker um, analogy for me is that it makes an exception for God. Because obviously then God doesn't have a creator, does he? So then, what created God? Um, and a lot of people would then say, well, God is eternal, God never had a creator. But then for me, um, from a philosophical perspective, it creates problems because, for example, that um, in it, Islamically, God is um, omnipotent and he's omniscient, so he knows everything. Um, so, uh, so if, if, a, if a creator has a creator and a creator has a creator and that all leads to God, then where did God get this information from? Yeah, so this is the problem, this is the problem with the infinite regress, right? So the question, who designed the designer? The first thing about the question is, is that it doesn't, it doesn't deny a designer. All it does is it asks us, what is the nature of the designer? Is the designer designed or undesigned? That's all it does, okay? Now we as Muslims, we would say the, design, the designer is undesigned. The designer is um, uh, without, without cause. Now philosophically, we can support this, how? Because if you have an infinite regress of past events, you'll never have a beginning. So if the past, if the past went back forever, we'll never have this conversation. That's the way we would address it. But this also shows the limits of philosophy, because like you said, Kalam, design, contingency, these can prove to us that it makes sense there's some creator, but it does not go an inch to who the creator is, what the creator wants, what the purpose of life is. So I want to end upon another point I want to ask you about. You know, you're 40 now, close to 40 years old, and obviously life goes past very quickly, right? What do you think about the question of the meaning or the purpose of life? Is that something that bothered you throughout your life? So, the meaning of life question is one of the biggest questions um, um, that we have. Um, so, the, the meaning of life for me, it's, 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 it's hard to pin down because obviously from an atheistic perspective, there yeah. isn't really an answer. Um, you could say, you could say the answer is just to reproduce, just to live and die. That could, that, that could be one of the answers. But it's not very satisfying. <laughs> exactly, it's not satisfying, but that doesn't necessarily prove it to be wrong either. Yeah, of course. Because science isn't satisfying and there's a more satisfy satisfactory answer out there, that doesn't mean that everyone should adopt that answer yeah. necessarily. Yeah. It doesn't make that answer correct, which is the, um, which is the idea is that um, we should worship God to attain Jinnah and an eternal paradise, which, which to me obviously sounds a lot more appealing. 
Yeah. Yeah. But we have to look at the evidence for it. Huh? We have to look for the evidence for it. Exactly, this is the problem for me. So, so the, the question of meaning of life is a very, very problematic for me. I'm, I'm just taking every day as it goes, to be honest. Um, like I said to you, I want to know as many truth things as possible and as many false things as possible. Sure. Um, another thing for me is, is happiness. I'll, read, I'll just read in the book right now about happiness. Um, um, how we measure happiness. Um, I want to be as happy as I, as I, as I can. I want to I wanna, I wanna be as happy as I can and I want to make sure I reduce suffering as much as I can as well. That's Those are good goals. For me in my life. Those are good goals. Um, are you aware of what the purpose of life in Islam is? So it's to worship God? Yeah. So we believe, and like you said, firstly, I totally agree with you. Just because the atheist answer is not satisfying doesn't mean it's not true, right? So what, what it basically is, is this. The purpose of life in Islam is to worship God. Now, what does worship mean? Worship means your love, hope, uh, fear, submission, everything is for God. This life is a test, meaning we go through good and bad and everything we go through. Ultimately, we're going to go back to God. And the most important thing, like I said in the beginning, is if you're sincere, then God will guide you. So it's not just got to do with philosophical arguments. Now, from what I've seen, you're, well, you're very well read, you're very intelligent, you're understanding everything. But what I would advise you to do is to pray for guidance, because ultimately it's, it's, it's that connection with God which guides you. It's not philosophical arguments. That's my sort of last message I wanted to give you. I appreciate that. Um, I, I, I consider myself to be an honest person, a sincere person. I, I, have, I, have, I have sincerely looked for answers. Like I said as well earlier, I, I do plan to read the Quran once I've done you know, been reading the Bible. Because I don't want to reject a particular faith without giving it a good, you know, without, without giving it as much time and, and effort as I can to understand its points. Yep. And, and, and see where it leads me. So, yeah, so yeah I'll, I'll leave it there. Yeah. So good. Thank you. Um, so that's a copy of the Quran. That's, um, what's it called? A short verses from the Quran. That's evidence from what I spoke to you about before, why the Quran is the word of God. You've, you've seen some of these things already online about prophecies, about uh, pr preservation, about these things. That's in more detail. And if you have any more questions, I'll give you my number and we'll be in contact. Any last message you want to give to people watching? Um, no, I'd, just, I'd say thank you. Thank you for having a talk. Um, I really like the stuff that you do on your channel. Keep doing it. It's really good. Um, I, I love the open dialogue that that, um, that you have. And um, and yeah, that's it. That's it really. Yeah. Thank, thank you for having me. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. That's it. Yeah, that's it. So um, let me see if I can get Ali to give you this book. This is really good. Do you read a lot? I'm reading the book now. Um, I don't know if you've heard of it. Um, I've been on the way here. Homo, Homo, oh yeah, 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 yeah. Homo Deus. So there's two versions of this book. There's Homo. It's got Deus. real. It's got real chip. Is it a real chip? I mean, I mean, I mean, it looks like a. It could be, you know. It could yeah. be a real chip. Yeah. Um, yeah, a brief history of tomorrow, and there's another version, a brief history of the past. Yeah, and there's also uh, 21 lessons for the 21st century. And the same author? Same author. Oh, That's his latest book. I obviously read this stuff a lot, so... <laughs> but it's really good speaking to you. Um, I've got your number. I'll drop you a WhatsApp. If you have any questions, let me know. Next time we can hopefully talk without so much noise in the background. But this is also, I think, one of the reasons why people turn away from religion is the, um, it's the misbehavior of religious people, which we all can do, but people get put off, you know, because uh, there's only a limited amount of patience you have. So you think people, don't you think burnout's a thing as well? Is where you can learn so much about one particular subject, it just burns you out, and you just become in, um, disillusioned with it. That, I, I think that that is something, I wouldn't call it burnout, I'd call it misdirected. Misdirected? Because religion, like it's the Islamic religion, is all about moderation. But when some people become a bit extreme, they eventually burn out and leave the religion. That does happen a lot. But my, I would say that's misdirected uh, understanding of Islam. It does happen, you know, some people become Muslim and they're like very, very strict and then they can't keep it up. But everything's about um, having some form of uh, moderation. Because human beings, you know, if you go to 
run the marathon tomorrow, you'll fail. Yeah, exactly. yeah. You need to train. You need to train. You need to acclimate. Exactly. You need to take steps. Exactly, exactly. And that's what religion's about. And the most important thing, like I said to you, is sincer sincerity. As long as you're sincere, God makes everything easy. Do you want to go for coffee? Um, I'm, I'm so you must be some other people, so... Okay, no problem. Thanks for talking to me. It's great speaking to you.